Hello, and welcome to The Dig, where for 12 months we cover 12 archaeological sites. Each month we feature a different archaeology site, which you'll learn all about. You can then go to Instagram and follow AITC underscore DC, and for the 30 days of that month, see featured artifacts from that archaeological site. Come with us as we learn all about one of the oldest Catholic archaeology sites in Maryland. We're going to meet with Jen Gibb and Scott Lawrence in St. Mary's County, Maryland, to learn all about the St. Francis Xavier archaeology site. We first learned about the site through local uh, legends and oral histories that the 1662 chapel was located in the cemetery for St. Francis Xavier. And the cemetery is about a quarter of a mile away from the existing church. Um, in 2010, Father Brian Sanderfoot, pastor at St. Francis at the time, hired Jim Gibb and I to do a survey mapping of the cemetery as it exists, getting inscriptions from the headstones. And while we were there, he did mention the legends of the 1662 chapel being in the cemetery, asked if we could do a quick archaeological survey. We did a shovel test pit survey, uh, digging test holes every 50 feet, and in the southwest corner of the cemetery, we started to recover 17th century material. Um, we did some close interval shovel testing in the area where we started finding this material and confirmed that we had a 17th century site, which led to full-scale excavations later on. Well, we're at St. Francis Xavier Church Parish Hall right now, and it's on Newtown Neck Road, uh, about a quarter of a mile north from here. People often wondered why is the cemetery so far from the church that is here now, which was built in 1731. The reason being because the 1662 chapel was built there and they started burying their dead there in the 1660s. Once the chapel was gone, they rebuilt years later, but still continue to bury their dead in the same spot, which is where they bury them even today. Well, obviously this archeological site sits in the middle of a cemetery. Um, there are a lot of, uh, there's a marshland that sits behind the cemetery, which we hypothesize was probably open waterway at one time. In the 17th century, land travel was very limited. Most people traveled by water. So this marshy area was probably open for boats to come in, for the local inhabitants to come and celebrate the mass. Um, there are a number of older tombstones, some from the late 18th century and early 19th century, up until today even. But it's a low, flat, grassy area surrounded by uh, woods on one side and cultivated fields on the other. This site is special because excavating churches or chapels from the 17th century is not something that's happened much in Maryland or on the East Coast for that matter. Um, the site is important to me because I'm, I'm local. My family is, was Catholic and has been here since the late 17th century. Not that my ancestors actually worshipped at this chapel, but they may have. So. As a local, it's tied to my community. It's part of my history. Um, I've changed in that I've broadened my understanding of 17th century architecture and ceramics. Um, it's been enlightening to me that there's a paucity of domestic artifacts, which you would not find in a chapel area. We think we have two sites, one of which was of possibly a priest's house. We find more of our domestic artifacts there and less in the chapel area, which makes sense. That this has largely been a community-based project. Now, though we do have paid excavators, and the church is funded, um, and the Archaeological Society of Maryland has funded this effort, but we've had upwards of 40 people volunteering on site, not only local parishioners who are investigating their own history, but local people in the community. Um, it was a nice way for people to really get in touch with their collective past.